to use volume to improve your trading. Remember, trading volume is a measure of how much a given financial asset has traded in a period of time. For stocks, volume is measured in the number of shares traded. So for today's video, I'm gonna be using a trading view to show you guys uh, what I wanna talk about here today. Trading view is completely free to use. And the very first thing that I wanna do here is show you guys how you can add the volume to your chart in case you don't have it yet. So what you wanna do is you wanna go over to trading view and you wanna go to the top here uh, in this indicators tab, go ahead and click on that. And then in here, we wanna search up for volume. So V-O-L, and just by typing that in under technicals, you should see volume. So go ahead and click on that once. That will add the volume to your chart. And then we can go ahead and close out of this window right here. So you can see the volume now has been added to our chart. Now volume on a chart by itself is pretty useless. But if we can combine it with price data, we can spot where the big traders are trading. Remember, individual small traders with their small number of shares can't make a huge difference on a stock. But if you buy and sell where the big traders are trading, that's where you'll make a big profit because this is where uh, the price tends to make a rather big move. Now, when it comes to volume and the relationship it has with share price, there's a couple of principles that we want to follow. So let me show you this chart right here, okay? So here's kind of the general consensus when it comes to price and volume and the relationship. And this is something that you should understand and that should be very simple to just spot. And we'll go over a few examples here. So here we have the first one here, right? So here's the price column, here's the volume column, and here's the forecast on a stock or index or whatever, you know, whatever asset it might be. So if you see the price increasing and you see the volume also increasing, this tells us we're in a very strong bullish trend. And so basically this can get, you know, help you out in many different ways. If we're in a strong bullish trend, number one, you probably don't wanna go short. You probably don't wanna enter any bearish strategies, right? If we're in a strong bullish trend, maybe you don't wanna sell quite yet, right? So if you see price increasing, volume increasing, generally it's gonna tell us we're in a strong bullish trend. Now, if you see price increasing, but you see the volume decreasing, this tells us that the retail traders are the one that are buying, right? So they're the ones buying. That means the individual traders are the ones that are buying. The big boys are not buying, right? They may be hesitant to buy. So generally, this also can let us know that a potential price reversal may be coming, right? And so again, the way you could use this is if you see price increasing and you see volume decreasing, you may want to wait and see if a reversal does come. Because again, that means the big traders are not buying. It's usually the retail traders buying. Next, if we see the price decreasing and we see the volume increasing, that tells us we're in a strong bearish trend. Again, you could potentially use this by, you know, if you see this, maybe you don't want to buy anything new. You don't want to go long in a position. If you see the price decreasing, the volume increasing, we're only generally going to be in a strong bearish trend. Finally, if we see the price decreasing and we also see the volume decreasing, again, that lets us know that only retail traders are selling the big institutional traders, they're not selling, right? So again, that could potentially signal to us that a price reversal may be coming. So if you see that, maybe you don't wanna go short. Maybe you wanna wait and see if there indeed you know, is a reversal that happens. So these guidelines, they do not hold true in all situations, but they offer a general guidance for trading decisions. They can definitely help you out in the future when you make a trading decision. So now I wanna go kind of through an example of each one of these and what we can see and kind of how you would spot it, right? So let's go uh, to our first example here. So here we have a chart on AMD, right? And we're looking at the daily chart. So here, if we go back, this was back in September, September 27th, 2021 to about, you know, November 8th, 2021. So we can see that the share price of AMD made a huge move to the upside here, right? It made a huge move to the upside. Well, what we could have done during this time period is we could have also taken a look at the volume and taken a look at what the volume did. 
So if you would have looked at the volume, because again, if you just look at the volume by itself, it doesn't tell us much. But if we actually also compare, compare it with price data, it can tell us a lot. So if we looked at the volume during this time period, we would have seen that the volume also started to increase and increase and increase, right? Basically increase. You can kind of draw this line like I did and you can see the volume steadily went up. So again, this, this you know, this, this fact that the price was going up, the volume was also going up, let us know AMD was in a pretty strong bullish trend during this time period. So if you would have seen this, you would have seen the price going up and you would have seen the volume going up, you probably would not have wanted to sell or enter a short position or any sort of bearish strategy until you saw the volume not increasing anymore, right? Because again, this generally would have told us, hey, we're in a pretty strong bullish trend here. Right? So this is kind of what a strong bullish trend would look like. You see the price going up, you also see the volume going up with it as well. Right? And then after this huge uh, volume candle, right, uh, you can see that the, the, the candles kind of come back down. Volume kind of comes back down. It doesn't no longer increases. And this is when it kind of traded sideways and then started to drop. Right. So again, if you would have seen this, you would have recognized this as a very strong bullish trend. Probably don't want to go short. Probably don't want to buy puts or any uh, you know bearish strategy here. Now let's take a look at another example. So here, this is on QQQ. This was rather recent, right? This was going back to March 30 of 2022. So we see a couple of things here, right? Number one, we see the price came up to the uh, the 100. MA line, right? So the 100 moving average, the red line, and it bounced off, right? So remember, these moving averages, they serve as areas of support and resistance. So if you would have looked at this chart, you would have seen that it came up to the moving average, the 100 moving average, and it did not break through it. Furthermore, we also see that the 100 day moving average crossed below the 200 day moving average, as you can see here. And it also was bouncing off of the 200 day moving average as well, right? So that right there tells us, hey, there's some pretty strong resistance going on here. But if we also would have taken a look at the price and the volume during this time period, what do we see? The price started to go down. What did the volume start to do? Volume started to increase and increase and increase and it continued to increase. So if you would have looked at this, you would have seen, okay, first of all, it bounced right off the moving averages here, right? Uh, so again, these will be strong resistance levels and it bounced off, it cannot break, potentially a reversal coming. Furthermore, we saw that press price started to go down, the volume started to increase. So again, this would have told us that this was a pretty strong bearish trend here. So again, during this time period where price was coming down, volume was going up, you probably didn't want to go long, probably didn't want to buy any new positions, uh, things like that, right? So these were the big investors selling because these candles or these uh, you know bars started to get bigger and bigger and bigger, right? So this is what you would have looked for uh, during this time period. Okay, so a couple of different things that we are seeing here, right? That could have told you know could have prepared us for what was coming. Now let's take a look here at another example. So here we have an example on SPY. And this was actually pretty recently. So what do we see here, right? We see that uh, SPY, right, recently started to go up, right? So if we go back to June 16th, we see the price of SPY made a pretty nice upward move. Now, what do we see here? We see a couple of things. Again, we see that it came up to the 200 day moving average, which again often serves as an area of support and resistance, and it hit it and it bounced off. It could not break it, potentially telling us that there was gonna be a reversal coming. Furthermore, right, we noticed that the price of SPY had been steadily increasing, but what was the volume doing? The volume was steadily decreasing. It was not increasing, it was decreasing, as you guys can see right here, right? The volume from when it started to go up to the top here, what did it do? It started to decrease. This tells us that only retail investors, the smaller investors, were the ones buying here, not the big investors, not the institutional investors. So the, the big traders, they were hesitant to buy here, potentially meaning that, you know, maybe they thought that, you know, it was too expensive or whatever. So again, this would have told us, hey, only retail investors are buying here, 
potentially a price reversal may be coming because the big traders are hesitant to buy. And then eventually, like I said, it hit the 200 day moving average and it could not break. So to another thing telling us, hey, it cannot break through here. It's probably going to start to bounce back down. And that's what it did right here. Right. So, again, that's how you would use this. Let's like take a look here at our last example here. So here we have an example with Tesla. This was a little bit back uh, back in November of 2021. So what do we see here? Right. We see the price of Tesla uh, decreased from here to here. So, again, what do we see? We see that the price came down to the 100 day moving average. Again, these moving averages a lot of the time serve as areas of support and resistance. So as they got closer to here, you could have potentially seen this and said, well, it's very possible it might bounce off of the 100 day moving average, which it indeed did. But furthermore, right, if we take a look here, we saw that as the price of Tesla continued to go down, the volume continued to go down as well. Volume continued to decrease and decrease and decrease. So we have price going down, but volume also going down. Again, this let us know that retail investors were the ones selling here. The big traders were not selling. They were hesitant to sell here. So again, how could you have used this? You could have used this by saying, hey, you know, price is going down, but the volume is going down. So I probably don't want to short anything. I probably, you know, don't want to enter any bearish strategy here yet uh, until, you know, unless I see volume going up. And so and then you would have seen that, hey, it's approaching the 100 day moving average. This could be potentially where the big traders step in to buy. And that is what happened right again when it reached the 100 day moving average. As you can see, it made a nice bounce to the upside after that. So that's kind of how you use volume and price. Again, this won't always hold true, uh, but they offer a general guidance for making better trading decisions. So if you guys have any questions about anything I just talked about, feel free to leave them in the comments section below. Check out the Discord, link to it in the description below. Hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know what you guys think, and I'll see you guys next time.